So Dark Matter recently exposed a Christian for being a four-star jerk. The Christian's name was Cartesian Theist, and he's a very pseudo-intellectual. Anyway, it turns out the guy was also professional at harassing people on the internet. What sort of harassment are we talking, I hear you ask? Sort of saying nasty things about them? Photoshopping them into images? No. We're talking about finding out who they are in real life and then impersonating their friends just so they can try and mess up their personal life and then to laugh about it. Listen very carefully to this comment. The demise of you and your MILF Kara is just too funny. You know what? Even some of her friends are still so confused that they think I'm her but that I've finally just come clean about my feelings for them. Ha 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 ha. I am literally laughing my ass off at it. One guy thinks he's well in with her. They won't see her the same way ever again. Ha 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 ha. See how you and her have both been fucked over. And yet to try to lessen the damage you declare some hollow victory. Ha 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 ha. It's only round three, pal, and there's another nine to go. That's right. It's not just an accusation. It's in his own words. The Cartesian theist is one of those guys who pretends to be a woman on the internet and then flirts with other guys so that he can manipulate them and defame people. And it's right there in his own words. For me, this clearly crosses lines. This is well outside the boundaries of free speech. You're not allowed to impersonate someone's friends in real life to try and mess up their life just because you disagreed with them on the internet. Now, it should be said that the Cartesian theist had a ready excuse for this, which was really grasping for the straws of plausible deniability, saying that, it was actually him and some of his friends who valiantly set up some communal accounts to counter online bullying. And it must have been one of his friends who used the account to say all of these nasty things. Uh, bullshit. First of all, back in the day, YouTube accounts were incredibly easy to set up. You certainly didn't need to share them. And secondly, it's written there in black and white under your own account in your own hand. Yeah, impersonating people with the intent of messing up their lives is not big, it's not clever, it's not funny, and it's not legal. So someone has set up a Twitter account in my name. Now, it may not have been Coughlin, but curiously, Coughlin was the very first person to subscribe to this account. Now, it should be said that Coughlin's not exactly the fastest gazelle in the herd. And it doesn't take a long Twitter exchange to work this out. So a while ago, I wrote this blog about how a woman at a secular meeting was reduced to tears by this t-shirt. To which Coughlin responds, Feminists reduced to tears by t-shirt. Yeah, it's hilarious watching women cry. To which I reply, What, the guy who marketed and sold his own line of got rape t-shirts? is now against the mildest of offensive t-shirts. No, you fucking moron. I was talking about the obvious hard-on you've got for this woman crying. It's good to laugh, ain't it? That's all right. I was talking about the man who sold got rape t-shirts, suddenly developing a sense of empathy because a woman cried. And then he followed up with another couple of tweets, which were just sick. So I'm not even going to read them. And it goes without saying that I didn't even dignify these with a response. Now, this person, who curiously Coughlin was the first person to subscribe to, proceeds to start tweeting out racial slurs, interestingly using the term Paki a lot. England, for those who don't know, had a big labour shortage after World War II, and a load of people came over from Pakistan and India to fill the labour hole. This later resulted in some social tension, with the term Paki in England becoming comparably offensive to the term nigger in America. Now, when is this parody and when is this impersonation? Well, I think when you're trying your best to impersonate someone, that is using their real name, using their exact screen name, using their exact 
avatar, that the goal is to impersonate someone with the intent of damaging their reputation by saying heinous stuff in their name. Anyway, curiously, Coughlin keeps retweeting these pointlessly racial slurs under my exact name using my exact avatar. But no, that wasn't enough. They had to go further, tweeting and retweeting vulgar propositions to friends of mine like Zermai oh It's Chris and colleagues like Richard Dawkins. Now, it was about this time that Dark Matter exposed the Cartesian theist, and with such obvious parallels, I tweeted Coughlin. His response almost beggared belief. After weeks of retweeting this pathetic sock puppetry with all the convincingness of a Christian laundering their hatred through the sock puppet of God, he says, After weeks of retweeting this stuff to his 3,000 or so followers, public service announcement if Thunderfoot wants to make drama over a Twitter account with 41 followers and accuse me of it, I won't waste my time in replying. And after I called bullshit on him, and he replied, he blocked me and went back to retweeting the impersonator. Now, at this point, we need to revisit history. Right, do you not like the fact I make all these images of you looking, these funny images, you know, that, that I, make, I make all these videos for these funny images of you, these drawing, like, making you look like a terrorist. Do you not like that? Does that get on your nerves a lot, does it? Yeah. Coughlin's explicit goal of photoshopping someone to make them look like a terrorist or photoshopping them to look like Bin Laden and dead, it's not to politically make a point. It's not for art. It's to get on someone's nerves. To personally harass someone is the stated goal. Droid, like making you look like a terrorist, do you not like that? Does that get on your nerves a lot, does it? And my response then, as it is now, is go ahead, knock yourselves out. I don't care. My skin is plenty thick enough to take it. No, I'm glad for you. I'm glad that you found something productive to spend those years between when you're born and when you die. Now, you do it from dusk till dawn. You can even Photoshop me into porn if you want. Or into a beat-em-up game. It's not a problem. It, in fact, it actually kind of makes me laugh to think that the best game that you've got to offer is... You sitting there in front of your computer, editing me into porn in the utterly erroneous belief that because this is the most nasty, most spiteful thing that you can think of, something that would drive you nuts if it happened to you, that it'll therefore drive me nuts. Here are some comments I've received in the last few weeks uh, as a result of... I did one video on my comments, but I think this one, these comments and uh, this video is really to highlight something else that's more important. Fuck you, you communist scum. Pat Condell owns you. I'm not watching your shitty video. Condell is older than you, and you should respect your elders. So what we've got here is a group of people who are actively going around being abusive, being fundamentalist in their mindset, they're not being rational, they're not being fair, and this isn't a minority, and this isn't just trolls. I find it interesting the amount of people who posted just mindless, pointless abuse at me and gave me shit. Uh, Darwin Films, um, you want to make reasonable criticisms, that's fine, but I, I was disgusted by the amount of comments I saw on his channel page and in his video calling him fucking sand nigger make, making all just dozens upon dozens of disgusting abuse and racial slurs now typically I go on the basis of let them have their fun you know a troll who is banned today is typically back again tomorrow while a troll who trolls themselves out and leaves their own volition typically does not come back however there are the crazies who will go further and further and further until they're doing things like impersonating you to mess up your personal life. And yeah, Coughlin, I'm a big proponent of free speech, but that does not extend to impersonating someone and then posting photoshopped images of them masturbating to that account in order to damage their reputation, like you did a year or two ago. You know what we did is satire. It was satire because his real penis is much smaller. 
<laughs> we had to increase the we had, we increased the image size by what four hundred percent, five hundred percent. What have we done? We just happened to make a website. We just happened to no, have no, 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 no. Wait them way. Happened. To make wait them way. Just happened to make a website. It just happened to have the same name as Thunderfoot, which he chose at random. And it just so happened to upload a picture of a guy who looked suspiciously like Thunderfoot. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't linked his website and said, this guy is this guy. No, it just did. It's all a massive coincidence. Now, sure, Coughlin will doubtless, as he's done before, and as most people do when they get caught with a hand in the cookie jar, start making excuses. Now, last time, even after he'd claimed that he'd set up this website in which I was photoshopped into porn, actually decided that, nah, nah, it wasn't me, it was a friend of mine. Let me have a chance to say whether it's not it was me, because it wasn't. The user was Silver Era 309. Yes, he is a friend of mine. But if I'm going to be held responsible for every fucking stupid thing my friends do, then why can't I hold Thunderfoot personally responsible for all the death threats I'm getting now? Well, I think obviously, because you were actively involved up to your eyeballs in this. Well, I was not actively involved or even peripherally involved with sending you death threats. And secondly, yeah, right. I'm sure you were swamped with death threats and that you lived in constant fear from this murderous band of psychopaths with a long history steeped in blood known as Thunderfoot subscribers. And what would you know? The same guy has now crawled out of the woodwork to again throw themselves under the bus for Coughlin. Now, to an extent, whether this is true or not is almost a point of irrelevance in that faking it is to an extent a lesser crime than publicizing it. It's kind of like saying, I'm not the guy who actually photoshopped someone into porn, I'm just the guy who printed it in the papers. But even if Silver Era is telling the truth here, and he's just the sicko, and Coughlin's just the guy who promotes his defamation endeavours, gotta be real, history is working against you on this who-do-you-believe scale. Like, sure, it's you who has form for photoshopping me into porn previously, it was satire, because his real penis is much smaller. And sure, it was you who has form for impersonating me. We just happened to make a website. We just happened to no, have no, a No, 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 wait him way. Wait him way just happened to make a website. It just happened to have the same name as Thunderfoot. And sure, it was you who stated that you photoshopped me to look like a terrorist to personally get at me. Right, do you not like the fact I make all these images of you looking... These funny images, you know, that, that I, make. I make all these videos for these funny images of you, these drawing like making you look like a terrorist. Do you not like that? Does that get on your nerves a lot, does it? And sure, by pure coincidence, you were the first person to subscribe to this impersonator account. And sure, you were happy to retweet all of these lewd comments of this imposter to friends of mine. But that doesn't absolutely prove that it was Coughlin just like it didn't absolutely prove that it was the Cartesian theist and, and it couldn't have possibly been that he was just laundering all of this through a sock puppet in the hope that it could be swept under the rug of plausible deniability. But let's just make this clear. It's not okay to create a Twitter account impersonating someone using my exact name, both my exact real name and my exact web alias, using my exact avatar, that is to make every effort to impersonate me in order to try and mess up my personal life by posting lewd and defaming comments to my friends. Nor is it okay to promote such activity. And then, of all things, to again post photoshopped pictures of me naked and masturbating to that same account. This is messed up for exactly the same reasons that it was messed up for a Christian to find out who someone was in real life to try and impersonate their friends to try and mess up their personal life. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Am I being too thin-skinned here? Is someone creating an account using someone's exact screen name, their exact real name, their exact avatar, and then posting lewd comments to your friends and photoshopped pictures of you naked and masturbating, crossing a line. How about that, Cartesian theist? Teach us some ethics now, won't you? Is lying and impersonating with malicious intent objectively wrong? <laughs>